those uh, watching our videos, we've been talking about how we would actually be known uh, to the nations of men as a true disciple or a follower of God. The scripture was quite clear on it. It said that you would know his disciples by the distinctive uh, quality of love. The word belief, not make believe, but belief. V and leaf, L I E F, means love. So therefore, Christ basically being the distinctive, complete quality of love, the example of love to all those that listen to the message of peace, uh, showed us the way. And therefore, when someone accepts their God-given name to be of the highest sovereignty, at that moment, their name is christened or becomes of Christ. We know this to mean in Scripture to be baptized or born again because at that moment you are symbolically baptized by the Spirit of God, the Comforter, which is there in the absence of the Son according to Scripture. So therefore your Christian name only becomes a Christian name from its given gift position once born with you at birth, bestowed upon your by your parents as a God-given name, but only becomes a Christian name upon your acceptance. And therefore, that's when it's christened. So how would we know if someone is a Christian? By their Christian name. How would we know those that have gone down another path, have walked in the ways, of those that follow deceit, fiction, their own path, their own way, their own will, well, they would have another name. And that other name is a name attached to that name which shows you to be in allegiance to someone who has no covenant with the true God. So therefore, your a surname added to one's real name identifies them as a follower trying to do his own will under a false master, a feudal master. A feudal master basically allows his feudal slave to believe that he is basically sui juris, his own master under his own right, but in reality he's still controlled by that feudal master. All he's allowing him to do is do trade and commerce because now he's taken away his spirit and soul which has been sold for money, a bribe, and therefore he allows them to do other trade and commerce with other feudal pagan slaves. A true Christian is non sui juris. He's not of his own right, because the right that he has that's unalienable was purchased by Christ, another master. And therefore Christ was explicit in the book of Corinthians that we were not to call ourselves masters that only Christ was to be called our master. And therefore the term mister that is quite commonly used amongst the Gentile nations as a term identifying someone usually only short form removing their given name and only attached mainly to their trading commerce name to identify what feudal master they're impersonating under license to be is only there for a reason to identify them away from the true God. And therefore, Mr. is short form for Master. When we get these terms clearly in front of us, these definitions, not hidden from us, only hidden by those who do not want to see and those who do not want to hear. God's Word is something beyond trust. It is never going to change. His word remains forever. And therefore Christ was made word, which is his promise. And his promise to you, that you had a promise of total pure inheritance as a son of God with that Christian name. But you required one thing, you must accept that. 
and therefore remain under his surety and not be part of the idea that you can be surety or guarantor for your own sins. Only God can make an error, only man can make an error.